Good morning uh, to you all. Uh, I'm very pleased to welcome the President of Latvia, Gilles Levitz, to Strasbourg and to the European Parliament. The President will shortly address uh, the plenary at this symbolic time, just a week before the first anniversary of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. If there are countries that know firsthand what it means to be under political pressure from an oppressive authoritarian regime, yours is certainly one of them. You also have a 214-kilometer border that you share with Russia. And regardless of this, or maybe just because of it, Latvia has, since the first day of the Russian aggression, been a leader and helped shape European Union policy with your unwavering support for Ukraine. Your country has also been leading the efforts in showing concrete solidarity with the Ukrainian people, giving protection to more than 45,000 Ukrainians, corresponding to 2% of your population. Finally, let me reiterate once again that continued European unity will be essential to hold Russia accountable for its crimes and to end the war. And I am positive that Latvia will continue to play a crucial role in the EU's determined response to the illegal aggression, be it through political, financial, humanitarian, or military support. Only together can we meet the challenges of our time. As we are short on time, and in order uh, to allow uh, for a couple of questions, I will leave it at this. Yeah, President, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Madam President. Uh, Thank you uh, for you for um, invitation to uh, share uh, my uh, thoughts uh, uh, with uh, parliamentarians. Um, I would uh, first uh, address the issue of European common European perspective, because uh, we are uh, all are uh, national citizens of 27 member states, but in the same time also citizens of the European Union. And uh, therefore, we have a double task. We should think about and care about our national states, but at the same time to develop a European perspective uh, so that we can all together achieve the goals which we cannot achieve as, uh, as national states alone. Uh, this is the sense why the European Union is founded to be together stronger as uh, alone. Uh, but I see also the problem that, see, uh, that this uh, European perspective is um, sometimes not in the focus in, uh, in our work, uh, also here in the European Parliament, by the European Union, but also in national parliaments. And uh, therefore, in order to have better results for us as citizens, European and national, we should uh, develop this uh, European uh, perspective uh, more uh, targeted, uh, more focused, and uh, then uh, we will uh, have uh, together uh, more um, ability more, uh, to, to act and achieve our goals. I will also address uh, one of the problems of democracy in European Union, it's populism, and uh, in particular the problems with the rule of law in uh, uh, our uh, European Union, because there are populist demands uh, to shift the balance between politi politically legitimized parliament and government on one side and independent judiciary on the other side. But a modern uh, constitutional democracy is based and can work only if the balance is kept. And therefore, I think uh, we should address also the problem uh, of uh, rule of law. And uh, I am firm that um, we all understand that uh, rule of law is indispensable for the functioning of democracy on national level in our countries, but also in, on uh, uh, European level. Then I will uh, address uh, the uh, situation in Ukraine, the uh, Russian aggression of Ukraine. 
And um, um, I will uh, stress uh, one, um, I think, uh, one um, a problem which is maybe not so, not so in the center of our um, appreciation of the war, that this is an ideological war. Russia has fallen back in the ideology of imperialism, colonial, colonialism, and racism of the 19th century. And this is behind the Russian aggression against uh, Ukraine. And uh, it is uh, not so easy uh, to overcome. We have uh, seen this by German example, how it is possible to overcome a toxic ideology after the Second World War. And until, until uh, Russian society has uh, overcome and recognized this toxic ideology, we should reckon with Russia and as aggressive state. And therefore, we should be realistic on that. And uh, our response is deterrence through uh, credible defense capacities. It's on military uh, field, of course, but also in all other fields. We spoke previously about uh, the um, interference in our democratic, uh, democratic uh, processes uh, through authoritarian regimes. We should be aware of that. And uh, one of uh, one specific project uh, uh, is a special tribunal on uh, Russian aggression against Ukraine. And I thank you personally, Madam President, but the whole European Parliament for the resolution of the 19th of January last, uh, this year, uh, where you are supporting this idea to create a special tribunal. Because the crime of aggression, and I can say this is a mother of all crimes which followed, war crimes and genocide and all others. It's a starting of an aggressive war. Uh, this is absolutely prohibited by, uh, uh, by um, the Charter of United Nations, but till now there is not a judiciary which is responsible to deal with that. And therefore we should create a special tribunal the uh, international community has done uh, that already in the case of Yugoslavia, Cambodia, Rwanda, Liberia, Sierra Leone, and others. So it's also now much more necessary to do it in the case of uh, Russia, because this is a most uh, or a, the gravest international crime possible, starting aggressive war. So uh, there are my my thoughts uh, about uh, these issues, and I thank again Madam President for the, for the possibility and for uh, here to, to speak and uh, for uh, the invitation. Absolutely. Thank you. Do we have time for one question? Yeah. Yes, Latvian Television, Elza Nadla. Madam President, uh, regarding the Tribunal of Russian Crimes uh, of Aggression Against Ukraine, European Parliament already has passed a resolution. What else can Parliament do in regards to that, and who should be the driving force in creation of the tribunal? Well, thank you for this question, and I'll follow on what uh, the President has just said. Uh, if we look at the ultimate aim, which is peace, we all want peace, Ukrainians want peace the most. And the whole European idea, let's not forget, is built on peace. But at the same time, peace without freedom, peace without Justice is no peace uh, at all. That's why the European Parliament has called uh, with large unity to set up uh, a special tribunal for the crime of aggression against uh, Ukraine. It is the strongest signal that we wanted to send on the 19th uh, of January, and we will continue to send uh, this week as we work on further texts uh, following the European Council last week um, uh, in this uh, regard because the war crimes committed against Ukrainians, of which there is growing evidence, mass graves, as we saw in Bucha, Mariupol, Izium, and others, and the continuous destruction of civilian infrastructure are a gross violation of international law. This European Parliament has also already declared Russia as a state sponsor of uh, terrorism. So our message continues to be that all perpetrators responsible for crimes need to be brought to justice, accountability is key and has to start 
now. From a legal perspective, but also from a political perspective, a solution needs to be found in order to bring the persons around a table and this tribunal to be set up. And we are calling for that and we will continue to do so. Thank you. Who should be the driving force? Who should be the driving force? I would say the European Parliament has started to be the driving force. We are the ones who are pushing for that and we will continue to do that. Thank you.